In this video tutorial we'll be looking at an eigenvalue buckling problem, a linear buckling problem of uh, a slender column. This column, which is pinned at both ends, is carrying a load of um, F and after a certain value it will buckle. So we're interested in finding out what is that buckling load. So the beam of the column is in compression. There is a formula that applies to this configuration and it is simply P critical equals pi squared EI over L squared. So L refers to the height of this column and E is Young's modulus, I is the second moment of area as usual. Uh, the column that we are going to model is half of this. So we can consider that this is the half symmetric part, the upper part. And we have in this case simply said we are going to fix that point and at the top we are going to apply a force F. So the two problems are um, equivalent. So this problem on the right is going to have uh, height of L over 2. And the cross section of this beam is B uh, and D in the height, therefore it's straightforward to calculate what is the second moment of area. So if we enter the uh, material property in the Excel spreadsheet, that's the Young's modulus, B and D values of the cross section, and we can calculate what are the second moment of area in the two um, axes that we can bend that beam. So one of them is 1666 millimeters to the power of 4, the other one is 6666 millimeter power of 4. The length in this case is 2000 and the problem that we are going to model, um, which is simply a beam which is fixed at the bottom and the load applied at the top, that has a length of 1000 millimeters. We can use this formula to calculate the critical load carrying capacity of this beam using eigenvalue linear buckling uh, considerations. So this formula simply says pi squared times d16 which is the uh, Young's modulus, d19 which is the second moment of area, divided by the square of the length. So this formula gives us the value 863, and in the other plane, if this beam was going to bend in the other plane, then uh, we can look at a much higher value, 3454. So the problem that we are interested in is uh, actually going to have um, a much lower critical load carrying capacity, 863. So we'll try to model this now using Creo Simulate. In Creo Parametric we can create the geometry for this problem. It is simply based on a rectangular cross section. So the cross section is defined as 10 by 20 millimeter uh, rectangle and it is extruded in the um, y direction 1000 millimeters. So the geometry is very basic and what we are going to do is put this geometry in um, Creo Simulate. So in Creo Simulate we have the geometry and we have defined the constraints. The first constraint, so the surface at the bottom of the beam is fixed in all directions in x, y and z and the surface at the top of the beam has got a force applied. So that force is specified as um, 1 newtons, so, and that is going to be in uh, negative direction. So we can make sure that that is negative y direction. That is our unit load in compression and in autogem we can also specify some geometry controls and that is in this case just 40 millimeters. So still just a few elements through the thickness of this beam. 
and we can mesh this and um, then solve for a static analysis. Our first analysis, analysis 1, is a static analysis and that is simply designed as uh, a multipass adaptive 9th order polynomial 5% convergence and converge on local displacement strain energy and global RMS stress as usual. And we can solve that So when the solution is done, we can look at the results. And the main result is that in compression, this must produce uh, negative stress. So we can see that the von Mises stress is, of course, positive. But if you look at the stresses in y direction, these stresses should be uh, negative. So we can a dynamic query and just check stress that is 0 0.005 in terms of um, megapascals. That is fine because we applied 1 newtons and the cross sectional area is 10 by 20 which is 200 nanometer square so that should give us 0 0.005 uh, megapascals in compression. And if we think about this problem, if we are doing a static analysis, we can continue increasing this load almost indefinitely and the beam will still be able to carry this load. But in most steel structures you will find that the beam or the column will buckle at some point and we are interested in finding out what is that uh, load carrying capacity of this beam in compression. So um, the next part is to look at um, buckling analysis. In buckling analysis uh, we are simply taking in the standard uh, static analysis. So if you look at the definition of that it's specified as analysis 2 and it uses the analysis 1 and it's using the load set 1 and convergence is as usual uh, ninth order polynomial, 5% convergence, etc. And it's also buckling load factor converging. The outputs are going to be stresses, rotations, reactions, and we don't have any excluded elements in this model. So that's the definition of the buckling analysis. And we can extract two buckling modes from this. Um, the two modes that we looked at in the Excel spreadsheet beforehand. So this has been already run and we can look at the results. And the results will simply say that there is mode 1 and mode 2 buckling. And mode 1, 865, is your buckling load factor. And that's the factor that multiplies the 1 newton load that we applied. So in mode 1, if there is a load of 865 newtons, that beam will buckle. In mode 2, if there is a load of 3458 newtons in compression, that beam will buckle. What we can do is also plot a fringe plot of our beam and we can show the deformed and undeformed shape and the displacements and this is going to be showing the, the way that the beam has buckled. So this is the second mode and we can animate that mode and make sure we understand how this buckling is happening. But this is, remember, a linear elastic analysis and also theory is linear, it's eigenvalue buckling, so the load factors that we are calculating are um, a conservative estimate. So let's go back and look at the mode 1 buckling and that is the, the lower load in our set that is carrying 865 newtons at the top. So if we exceed that our theory says that this beam will buckle. An interesting comparison here is if we applied that load, the critical load now, and let's say we applied that instead of minus 1, we applied minus 
865 which was our load carrying capacity for this beam and if we did run a static analysis we know that our theory says that it should collapse and we can look at the results for this uh, this is already run so we can check the results of that and the deformed undeformed and element edges are here and we can plot the y stresses and ok and show and you can see that by dynamic query the stress on the structure is just about minus 4.3 megapascals with that load on top which is compressing this beam and this is a static analysis and, and you can see that there is no sign of buckling and um, the minus 4.3 megapascals for steel is a very low um, stress level and if you consider that the compressive strength of the material for this beam which is steel is about uh, let's say 300 megapascals there is still a very long way from this compressive stress to uh, the yield in compression for the material. So this beam will buckle long before it will uh, plastically deform in the compression direction. So we can close this and then look at the buckling load factors. We can say don't save. Um, in the buckling analysis it is simply uh, ran again using that um, 865 as the compression load and now our buckling load factor is 1 and 865 times 1 is our buckling load and we can see that it is just um, as expected and we are getting a buckling load factor of 1 and if you look at the mode shape of that it is exactly the same as before so it is buckling in that direction with a load of 865 newtons. So this completes our buckling tutorial.